Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a foresty scene kind of sketchbook spread with my acrylic gouache paints and uh, come along with me on this journey. Okay, there's some of my old, older stuff that I did. And I'm, I just thought I'd show you how I sketched it. Um, I found these pictures because I had gone to, for a little forest walk. So the first two pictures that I drew are uh, from that little walk, but I kind of improvised them. Like I obviously changed the colors and, you know, added some mushrooms here and there. But uh, that was my inspo for the first two. And then the last one I just saw on Pinterest and this little bird, I just wanted to draw a tiny bird and added a little snake on the side and just wanted to make like a nice little foresty sketchbook spread. I really wanted to practice using my paints and trying some different things with them, uh, especially like leaves and grass. And um, so yeah, so this paper turned out to be really, really good for definitely probably even one of my favorite ones. I wish it was toned tan because you know how I love that, but it just worked really well with the paint. So, and it was very fun and easy to use. And here is my paint palette. It's not dirty. I cleaned it. It's just stained because the palette paper that you put on top of these stay wet palettes, it just gets stained, but it's totally clean. So then the colors won't get muddy. And I just decided to do a nice little wash at the start. For the first one, I'm going to do the long, tall tree first. And I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing whatsoever. So I just started doing it. And uh, I just wanted to have like a fun background. Right now I'm currently trying to do a painting and I it's not going as well as this one went. <laughs> so I just laid down this green, uh, nice kind of green color and then I realized that the paper was making it really easy to blend and it was like way better than using my other paper that I had started with uh, for doing like this blending kind of thing. Um, started more wet with the paper a little bit wet and I just didn't hadn't really tried that before. So I was like, oh, I can actually do more stuff with this than I thought. So I was able to um, really mess around with it and make a nice blended uh, going from light to dark on top for the background. So uh, that was really fun and the paint just laid down really well. I don't really know how to explain it, but I guess just use watercolor paper, <laughs> which is probably really obvious. But I like using the tone tan paper because I love the look it gives and gouache is really easy to use on other stuff too because it's not a super wet type of paint. Like it's not like you're using watercolor or the paper is going to get really warped or anything. So you can do it. It's just nice how it absorbed into this one in particular. Uh, this is the Arctic's sketchbook and they had give, sent sent me this um, as a gift at one point so really good for gouache I guess. So I decided to make the shadows really dark and because when I on the day that I had gone and seen this uh, tree that's what it was like. It was a really really light colored tree and had a nice big shadow on it and I loved that and I outlined the shadow with sort of a neon orangey pinky color because I wanted it to look cool, like, you know me, sunset. I wanted it to be kind of sunsetty, and faded some other uh, s sticks and bits of bush and everything in the back with the darker color and some trees there, which I thought was like a really, I just n had never done anything like this before, too much background stuff, especially painting, and I just had so much fun doing it. I loved it. And then I had to refresh my water because I was starting the new one. And I like to, whenever I change colors and just if the water gets too muddy, I really like to change it because I find that it's just makes everything a little easier to have nice clean water every once in a while. So now I was getting a little more confident with doing the background. I fully wet it after I did the bottom part so that I could then blend in the top because I knew these were going to be two different really different colors I put a little bit of pink in there and I was like oh I can really blend this like this is so fun I just ha always have bad luck with like anything that has to do with watercolor bad luck or inexperience <laughs> and I just was surprised at how much fun I was having with doing this I guess I was getting a little more comfortable with gouache and I had seen some other people using it in a looser more watercolory way and I guess I wanted to try doing the background like that and yeah it was just 
really, really fun. I wasn't like a huge fan of how I, I like the background I did on the, the first one a lot better, like how the items in the background look. But, you know, this was this page was all just really like an experiment. I just wanted to have fun drawing some trees and drawing a little bit of foliage and stuff from the summer. And I just was really happy with the some pictures I took when I had gone on that walk and some trees that I saw because they looked really cool and they were shaped cool. And I took those pictures when the mosquitoes weren't out yet and now they're out so I can't, I couldn't possibly go out there at this point in time, but maybe in the fall I will. Cause it's literally covered in mosquitoes. Like you can't stop for one second, I tried. And you can't even stop to take a picture anymore. <laughs> but that's okay, that's just nature. So I was just mixing. I has had a little bit of a hard time knowing where I was going with this tree. I kind of wanted to do like one of those blocky looks that I sometimes do, but it wasn't really working out. So I sort of made it more just looking like bark, which I like that better now. And my favorite part about it is these yellow mushrooms that I put on the tree, which um, did not exist in real life. It just looked like a regular tree in real life with nothing around it. And it was just kind of in the ground. But I added a bunch of mushrooms because I wanted to add some orange bright stuff and doing those little leaf dots and like adding highlights on leaves absolute fave after doing this it's so much fun and it's so low pressure then I decided to get these little acorns out of the way and this little bird I was like how do I do a bird I just really was focused on doing the like shininess of the feathers kind of wanted to make them look shiny I think it turned out pretty good I think the bird looks cute in general I just wanted to make like a fat little bird so wasn't anything complicated. I really just wanted to fill the space because I didn't want to do just three blocks of pictures and then nothing. I just wanted to have some like little fun things in between, you know. And then I did do a snake on the side, but I didn't even bother showing that because it looked so ugly after. And you'll see at the end, <laughs> it's just a snake. And I don't look up pictures of snakes because I don't want to. So I just kind of went with my brain. And also the one that I saw in the garden the other day that got me really scared I kind of went off based off of that one because it did give me a little bit of inspo when it struck the fear of God into me when I saw it. It was really scary, even though it was never going to bite me because it was just a tiny little snake. But I do really hate snakes. And when I see them in real life, it makes me really worried. <sighs> Sorry. So then I did something really dumb and I taped this. But I really just wanted to have it, you know, I taped to the bird and I was like, it's going to be fine. This is my special, super special painter's tape. I'm going to be absolutely fine with it. And um, spoiler alert, it wasn't fine, but that's okay. I fixed it at the end. You'll see, but it wasn't fine. So yeah, I wasn't sure. This one is the one I had a hard time with, even though I had such a good reference picture from Pinterest of this really nice mushroom that I've always looked at. I've had this on my Pinterest page for I can't even tell you how many years how I how I've looked at this how many times I've looked at this mushroom and I just love it I love the color of it so I was like okay today's the day I'm gonna do it and I think I just got in my own head about it I don't think it should have been that much of a problem but maybe I was just nervous and sometimes that happens when I've done the whole rest of the page and then I'm on to the last one I'm like oh I really can't mess it up now because I've done this whole page and that always happens to me and I really need to learn to just absolutely chill out because it's not that big of a deal and that's what always makes it go wrong anyways so I started by just messing around putting a couple things in the background kind of laying down a bit of color and then I was like I'll see where I go from there and my issue with the mushroom is that it has like a very odd looking like a special looking texture and I really really wanted to make it look like shiny and like the weird texture that it has and I was like do I do a cool color do I do like a warm color or an ashy color so I need to figure out how to convey like the lighter spots and spots that are in shadow a little bit more I think I really just need to practice on stuff like that I messed around with this for so long like everything else was a pretty quick process I knew how I was going to approach it I knew what to do but this one I was like okay I'll try putting this okay I'll try putting this and then like nothing really worked but I'm looking back at it now and I'm seeing some points where I'm like, yeah, that that really was fine. Like you could have just done sort of an, you know, abstract kind of look like it didn't have to be exactly the way it looked in the picture. Like, But again, I was just worrying about it too much. So I decided to take a little break at that point. And I was like, let me just let this dry and 
fix what's going on with the grass because obviously the grass was not looking the way I wanted it to. So I just decided to switch that up, make the colors a little bit different, just a bit. I still had some of those things in the background, so that was fine. And just wanted to kind of like warm up the background, I guess, and make it darker because I wanted to start with a dark underneath the grass and then put lighter pieces of grass on top. I thought that would work out well. And then I let that dry, messed around with the mushroom again, made myself upset again. But I do like underneath the mushroom where the little, like you can see what's underneath. I like that part. And I like the shape of it and everything. And eventually I do get it. You'll see at the end, I actually really like how it how it all turned out. And it was a good like learning experience, but like like I said, I'm working on a painting right now but in between doing this voiceover and it's not going quite well. So it's kind of like, you really have to keep at this stuff to keep remembering how to do everything, you know? <laughs> painting is actually really hard um, to me for now because I kind of just started this this year and I never really did painting before. It was always markers. So I'm just like having a hard time figuring out all of the tricks and all of the different things. And I've only painted a few things. And right now I'd like to paint like a castle. And so we'll see how that goes. That could be fun. I was going to paint something else, but I was like, no, that's too hard. So put in the uh, lightness, just a couple little brush strokes there, really easy. And then a little bit of darkness. And I love how the grass turned out. Like it, it was a bit of a struggle and took all day to do this little square here, but how the grass turned out really am proud of it and I took it even lighter and I just kept adding a little bit more white or a little bit more of I think the color is called pale lime it's a really really light green and I just kept adding that to make it lighter and lighter and lighter and just put uh, less and less highlights the lighter I went with it because I just wanted some sort of nice little pieces there if that makes sense I hope it does and put some grass in front of the mushroom of course as well because I don't know, I just thought that that looked cool. And then I kind of was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have put the grass in front because I still have to do some highlights here. Like, just couldn't figure out how to stop myself from continuing. But I like how this uh, this bit here looks. It's kind of, kind of started to convey the shininess in a way that I wanted to. And then I pulled the tape off. Oh, and I ruined the acorn. And I started to freak out. And I was like, no, do the other side, stop. I did the other side. It was fine. Oh, I still had to do that snake. And I fixed it. Actually, it looked better after I fixed it. Um, then I signed it. And that's the snake. It looks so stupid. <laughs> and I did a little leaf on the side too. So this is the whole finished thing. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next week as always. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.